Over a three-year period, Hannibal, the great Carthaginian general, terrorized the Roman Republic. Hannibal was the son of Hamilcar Burka. Hamilcar was Carthage's top general in Spain, and he helped mold Hannibal into the great general that would get revenge on Rome. It is safe to assume that Hamilcar was deeply affected by Carthage's defeat in the First Punic War, a war in which the Roman Republic secured the Mediterranean Sea and the strategically important island of Sicily. Some historians believe Hamilcar instructed Hannibal on the strategy that would cement his legacy. In one of the boldest and most audacious plans in military history, Hannibal attempted a mountain crossing of the Alps in 218 BC. This was frankly the only way that the Carthaginians could invade the Italian peninsula. As stated earlier, the Romans controlled Sicily and the Mediterranean. So, in 218, with his Gallic allies, North African allies in the form of the feared and respected Numidian cavalry, as well as thousands of horses, beasts of burden, and several elephants, not to mention 90,000 soldiers. These numbers are according to Polybius, a famous Roman historian who wrote decades after the war. Polybius also stated that by the time Hannibal crawled out of the Alps after a four-month expedition, his army had been severely diminished. The historian also estimates that close to 60,000 Carthaginians and their allies died during this trial. Elephants crossing mountain passes are an enduring mark of the Second Punic War. One of Hannibal's main plans was to try and attract Roman city-states to ally with him and abandon the Republic. The Romans were scrambling. Hannibal had already defeated them once before their mountain expedition when they moved through an unguarded pass. They were fearful and realized that war with Carthage for the second time was likely on the table. Hannibal refreshed his armies as they moved south through the Italian peninsula. Rome had positioned an army to meet Hannibal and hopefully stopped this southward advance. The Romans had positioned an army further north, but Hannibal was able to bypass them. They stopped at a lake called Lake Trasimene on the northern side hoping to meet Hannibal's army. What happened next would be the first of two massive Roman defeats. Hannibal had positioned his entire army and cavalry in the hills above the northern road along the coast of Lake Trasimene. The Romans had a force of 25,000 under the command of Gaius Flaminius. Gaius Flaminius was a somewhat controversial figure in his time. He was thought of as a progressive reformer who went against some of Rome's more traditional values. One of this was his second consulship, a position he held in 217 during the battle. This was controversial because it was thought to be against the political norm to hold office of consul more than once. Flaminius's consul was in command of the Roman army. He began his march around the north end of the lake on a misty, foggy morning. The fog did well to hide Hannibal's army of 50,000 troops who were on the mountainous hillsides. Hannibal's army had gone on night maneuvers to get ready for the trap. As the bulk of Flaminius's army was parallel with Hannibal's army, the easternmost flanks began in engaging with Hannibal's African cavalry and infantry units. Hannibal then moved his entire army from the hills and trapped the Roman army between the mountains and the lake. Hannibal also possessed a 2-1 to -one advantage. Fighting quickly became a slaughter, as Romans retreated and broke formation and headed into the lake for escape. As the Carthaginians began surrounding the Romans on the road, sections of the Roman army began to break out and were cut down in massive numbers. Those that ran to the lake succumbed to drowning or were cut down on the shore, creating a bloody mess. Flaminius himself was decapitated in the fighting. His leadership was questioned by many of the historians who have covered the battle. They all believe he lost his nerve and the army dissolved around him. In the end, the Romans suffered a staggering 15,000 casualties, with another 10,000 being captured. Those that were Romans of the captured were reported to have not been treated well. Additionally, many of Hannibal's Libyan allies stripped the Romans of their armor and wore Roman armor for the foreseeable future. Hannibal's army suffered close to 2,000 dead. Most were believed to be Gauls who were positioned in his center. This has been called the greatest ambush in history, and it's almost unfathomable that an entire army of 50,000 can ambush an entire opposing force and produce such a dominating victory. 
After Trasimene, the Roman army did not directly engage Hannibal's forces. Instead, they adopted the Fabian strategy named after the current consul. Avoiding direct conflict with Hannibal's forces allowed the Carthaginians to have free reign of the Italian peninsula. The next massive conflict was the Battle of Cannae, another masterful strategic stroke for Hannibal, and a battle I will cover in another episode of Everything Has History. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel for daily shorts and other interesting historic documentaries. I'll see you on the next Everything Has History. Mm -hmm.